Hello, hello, and welcome back to Extracurricular Activities. We are still hanging out with Harold. I think we were pre preparing for the dinner, right? Or did we do that already? It's fine, it's fine. You stopped eating and moved around the table to get to get behind Harold so you can uh, grope... Wait, drope? Drip, drape? Drape. Your arms over his chest and hug him. His paws rested over your arms and he leaned back into you. You held him like that for a couple of minutes until he cleared his throat and wiped his uh, face off with a shirt. Okay, okay. Uh, sit back down and finish eating. I'm done, so I'll start cleaning up. Then I can go do some reading. You can, but you know. You sat back down and he started to clear the table. It's getting late and it might take a little bit uh, to read what I would have done. Maybe we should just uh, stick to the movie tonight, and uh, you can read what I wrote tomorrow. We'll have all day together, so you'll have plenty of time. You want to uh, put up with me all day again? I want to put up with you all weekend. How about it? Would you mind waiting until tomorrow? I guess I can, I can wait until then. Maybe I'll add a, a little more to, uh, to it before you can read it. Okay, I'll wait then. Good. Then as soon as you're done eating, you can go get the uh, movie started. I want to watch this movie called Bear Rider. I saw it advertised recently and it looks hilarious. Bear Rider? I think I've heard of it. I'll go pull, uh, pull it up in a minute. You don't have to rush, so take your time. You don't have much uh, food left to eat, and uh, once your plate was emptied, you handed it to Harold, uh, got a kiss on the cheek, and were sent to the living room. But not before giving his uh, bear butt, <laughs> what, his bear, bear butt, a good grope and shake. It only took a moment for you to find the movie Harold wanted, and only a few minutes passed before he plopped down on the couch right next to you. Find it? Yep, it's ready to go. Uh, start it up then. An arm was wrapped around my shoulder, and you p and you were pulled into your soft, warm boyfriend. Throughout the movie, his paws went would pet you, uh, scratch you, uh, rub you, and massage you. He couldn't uh, keep them off of you, but that wasn't a problem. You felt, yeah, you just felt more and more spoiled. Uh, the movie rolled on, and his uh, bellowing laughter echoed through the house from time to time. His whole body shook when he, yeah, when he laughed, and it took you. Yeah, it shook you around to, to find him, to turn, wait, and it shook you around and turn. I'm, I'm doing all right, guys. I'm doing okay. The whole experience was a joyous one, and by the time the movie came to an end, a Harold was wiping tears from laughter, from, yeah, from laughter away from his face. That was just as great as I thought it would be. You can't, uh, you couldn't stop laughing during the scene when they were on the boat. That line was delivered so perfectly, it struck a chord with me. I'm sorry if my laughter ruined anything for you. I can be really loud when I laugh. That just made the scene that much better for me. Your laughter makes me laugh and smile more. Good. I was afraid I'd disrupt you. Not at all. I'm pretty drained now, though. Ready for bed? I think so. Me too. It's been a busy day, so I'm ready to crash. To the bedroom, then. Uh, you took turns with the uh, bathroom, and as you prepared for bed, and... Yeah, as you prepared for bed, and it wasn't long before you were snuggled up under a blanket on your side, uh, facing each other. Today was such a good day. Yeah, it's been great. I'm happy we spe we got to spend so much time together. Me too, baby bear. I hope you don't get tired of hearing me say this, but I love you. I'll never get tired of hearing you say it. His paws find your hand under the blanket, and he pulls you to pulls them to his chest. I, my heart is yours. You're really captured it, you know that. Uh, you mean the world to me, and I hope you understand that I'm, yeah, that I'll do any whatever I can to make you happy. I just love you so damn much. I love you too, you big sap. Sap? Yeah, sapo. I don't really... Yeah, I don't mean to um parrot what you say, but I really mean it when I say that I feel the same way about you. 
I can't imagine myself being happier than I am with you right now, and I'm glad I can make you happy too. I'm the luckiest bear in the world. And I'm the luckiest guy in the world. No, I'm luckier th- uh, not luckier than I am. You can have the bear title. I get uh, I get the other one. Vine. He pushes you onto your back and cuddles you against with against you with his head against your chest and his arms draped over you. Is this okay? It's fine. Your fur is soft and you're so warm. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> You ran your fingers, yeah. He, you ran your fingers through his hair and uh, gave his ears a rub between your forefingers and thumb. You altered between rubbing his ears, head and back, and you could hear a constant soft rumble coming from him, almost like a quiet motorcycle engine running. Uh, the rumble fades faded slowly, and it was replaced with a quiet snoring as he drifted off to sleep. That didn't take too long. That's my bear, my Harold. I love you. You kissed the top of his head and continued patting him until you fell asleep. Okay, 34. It's 35 days, right? (coughs) Yep, I still got saliva caught in my throat. Is what it is. A boom of thunder jolted for you from your sleep, and you could hear the gentle patter of the rain against the window as you came to your senses. It sounds like a storm is brewing. Uh, It didn't take long for you to realize that you were alone in the bed and Harold was nowhere to be seen. Where's my bear? It doesn't sound like he's in the bathroom, so maybe he's having breakfast or something. Let's go find him. He's not in here or the kitchen. The only other place would be his office. His door was open and and that's where you finally found him. He was leaning back in his chair, eating a bowl of cereal and staring at his computer. Here you are. I wondered where you went off to. Oh, good morning, Mr. Josh. I got hungry and didn't want to wake you, so I came in here. Do any of you find cereal filling? Like, I feel like cereal is something that I'm like, I eat it because I want it and not because I'm hungry. You know what I mean? Or maybe that's weird. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Uh, the thunder ended up waking me up. Uh, that was that. There was that really loud boom not too long ago. I'm not surprised. What do you want to do today? You walked around the to the chair, not uh, too behind his chair, and you saw the computer wasn't even turned on, and he had been staring at an empty screen. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. I haven't really thought much about it. Uh, the weather ruins a lot of anything I have in mind. Is there anything you want to do? I don't know. I'm content with just hanging around here with you. I'm down to do anything. You grabbed his shoulders and rubbed them while he continued to eat. I suppose I'll uh, think of something. Why don't you go eat in the, uh, some breakfast and I'll come join you in the kitchen? Sure, I could go for some cereal too. I'll be in the kitchen then. Okay. He seems a little out of it. I wonder if he has anything to do if that if it has anything to do with uh, what was on his mind yesterday. I'll have to try and get it out of him. You poured yourself a bowl of cereal and sat at the table, and Harold joined you after filling his bowl again. Did you sleep all right? Not really. I really struggled last night. Bad dreams or something? Uh, no, just my mind wouldn't shut down. I might try to t- uh, nap after breakfast. I'm really tired. If you need to, go for it. I didn't plan to do anything today, so I'll just keep you company. If you want, that is. Oh, I would like that. You were both slow to eat your cereal. Your mind was clouded with worry, and you could see something weighing on his on his mind, too. You poked around at your cereal with, a, with your spoon, and Harold didn't finish his second bowl before dumping it in the sink. I'm glad, uh, I'm going to try to take a nap. Wake me up if you need me for anything. Will do. Did I upset him? I want, I want to know, but I don't want to be a bother, to bother him either. Maybe after he rests for a while, he'll talk to me about it. Uh, you moved to the living room after you finished your cereal and tried to make yourself comfortable on the couch. 
I guess I'll just sit here and see what he wants to do. It was impossible for you to relax while you sat, sat there. Your head was working overtime, trying to think of things that Harold might be upset over. Is he drifting back into another bout of depression? I thought he had that under control. But what if that's creeping back in? And that's what therapy is for. Uh, maybe I should go check on him. But what if he's irritated that I bother him? I don't want to bother him more. He already seems annoyed that I'm here. Does he even want me to be here? I guess I could call Richard for him to take me back up, but... Uh, okay, I'm gonna go check on him. <clears throat> you crept into the bedroom door and, as quiet as you could, opened it. He's not in here. Oh, the bathroom door is open and the shower is going. I guess he's in there. You poke your head in, and sure enough, he was standing in the shower. He was leaning against the wall, looking down with his uh, back to you, and the water was running over his uh, his uh, head and down his body. Harold? You stayed silent and went back to the couch to give him the time alone he asked for. An hour passed by, and the pain of worrying about Harold was crushing you. Oh, hello, Maria. Good morning, Mr. Josh. I hope I'm not disturbing you and Harold. Don't worry, you're not. What's up? I just want to let you know that I'm finished repairing his bear. Oh, that was fast. I wanted to get it done as quick as possible for you. I figured since it's he's done, you could pick him up today and perhaps have lunch here. Uh, Richard really wants pizza, so uh, we were going to order a couple. That sounds like a great idea, and I'm sure Harold would appreciate it. In that case, if you two want to be here around noon, I'll, um, put in the order in a little bit. Sure, thanks a lot, Maria. Of course. The weather is so dreary today, so you two be careful on your way over. We will. Uh, we will be. I suppose we'll uh, see you in a bit. I'll see you both soon. I hope he doesn't mind. I bet having his bear repaired will otherwise raise his spirits. Not to mention food is involved. I guess I'll go get, uh, let him to know, and, uh, so he has time to get ready. You poke your head into his room before fully opening the door. A herald? The bear was sitting at the edge of the bed with his face buried in his hands, and when he heard you, he, uh, was quick to, uh, rub his eyes. Hey, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I took a shower and got soap in my eyes, and they're still burning. Do you need anything? Maria invited us over for lunch with, uh, her and Richard. Uh, they're ordering pizza. I thought you might enjoy the food and some other company, so I agreed. Ah, oh, that doesn't sound like a bad idea, I guess. What time does she expect us? She said noon. We have a little bit longer, then. I'm going to wash my face and try to get the rest of the soap, uh, cleaned out. Was it really soap? You changed and returned to the living room to wait for Harold. Another half hour passed before you joined before he joined you, and he uh, looked better than he did when you saw him in the bedroom. Okay, uh, his eyes still had a uh, troubled look on them, but his overall demeanor seemed to have improved. Ready to go? <laughs> Whenever you are. All right, let's go then. Harold drove slowly through the pouring rain and silence, his paw dripping the uh, yeah gripping the steering wheel, and his focus was uh, solely on driving. The rain, uh, the rain really started to come down, didn't it? Yeah. A good thing it held off yesterday, or it would have ruined our matches. Are you looking forward to playing L and L tomorrow? You could see his hand squeeze the steering wheel, and he took a deep, unsteady breath. I don't know. What do you mean? I thought you really enjoyed. You were really excited about it. It's just that. I don't know if my head is going to be in the proper state to play. What's wrong, Harold? You've been distant the last couple days. You mentioned last night that there's been something on your mind, but you didn't tell me what it was. You know you can talk to me. Deanna's whole escapade at the house was on the news, and you were in it also. What? One of my neighbors recorded it and gave it to the local news station. Of course, word got back to the school board, and I was called in for a meeting again. They brought up Deanna reporting me dating you, and uh, then they questioned why you were both at my house. I couldn't lie again, so I came clean. 
No, oh, no. Did they did they fire you? Please don't tell me they fired you. I was given an ultimatum. You remained in the car. Yeah, in the car once you arrived at the shelter, and you were able to talk face to face. Which was? I would either be terminated or break things off with you. You could just lie to them and tell them where you're breaking up with me, right? Oh, I don't want to lie about it anymore, Mr. Josh. Oh, I'm drained. I'm just so mentally exhausted lately. It's taking such a heavy toll on me. Then you're just gonna quit? His silence spoke volumes, and your heart dropped into your stomach. Your eyes immediately began to well up with tears, and you turned your face away. You're, you're breaking up with me, aren't you? Not exactly, no. You wiped your eyes before you could look at him. What do you mean? I don't want to break up with you. I love you so much, and I know you love me too. But I can't risk my career for this either. I don't know what I would uh, do if I lost my job. So I wanted to make a little compromise with you. If, if it means we can still be together, then whatever it is, I'll do it. Let's put our relationship on hold until the semester is over. When you're done with my class, uh, there won't be any repercussions for us dating. I'll just drop your class. No, you need the credit for my class, and you're doing so well in it. I don't want you to do that. We just won't be able to hang out or meet up or anything outside of class or the courts. Just like when Deanna first tried to rat you out? Yeah. I was feeling so confident about not caring about what anyone else thought, but lately, it's worried me so much. I can't lose this job, Mr. Josh. I love what I do, and I have no backup. You, we can still be together, but it'll just have to wait uh, a couple of months. Hell, a break might do us some good. I can focus on getting my thoughts straightened out and get back to, uh, get back in order. What do you say? I'll do what I have to for you, Harold. Your happiness and well-being means so much to me, but I don't want to let you go. No, I'm happy to hear that, baby bear. I don't want to lose you either, and I think this might be the best option for us now. Okay, if that's what it takes, then I'll do it. I'll... then I can do it. He puts his paw on your leg and gave it a gentle squeeze. His eyes were uh, wet from uh, blinking... Yeah, blinking back tears, but he was smiling again, seeing the, uh... Oh, the smile causes a wave of relief to wash over you. How about we go inside? We can talk more about this later. Just give me a moment. You wipe your eyes and took several deep breaths to calm yourself, but before you got out, Harold, uh, took your face in and with his hand and leaned in for a kiss. I'm sorry for all the stress I've caused. It's okay, Papa Bear. We'll be okay. Yeah... He put his lips against your forehead and grabbed the handle of the door. Out into the rain we go! You threw the door open in unison and dashed into the shelter. You fellas look a little wet. How observant. The sky opened up right before we got out of the car, so uh, the uh, short run from the car to the uh, door was a wet one. Let me get you guys a towel. I didn't need you getting uh, water all over the place. You trotted off to, uh, down the hallway, and he returned a moment later with a towel. Here. Uh, thanks. Harold took the towel and used it to dry off, to dry you off first, uh, patting the towel down along your arms and head to get all the water he could. Oh, good. You made it here safely. The rain got really bad all of a sudden. Yeah. It wasn't this bad when we left, but it got worse. I felt guilty ordering I feel guilty ordering pizza now. I hate making someone get out in this weather. It's their job. They'll be fine. Still, I hope it lets up before they get here. I already put in the order, so it'll be about fifteen more minutes before it gets here. Oh, thanks for inviting us over for lunch. We had no plans for the day, so this was welcomed. Well, it was Richard's idea. Yeah, so you can thank me for that. Oh, uh, thank you, Richard. You're welcome, Harry. You boys go have a seat. Uh, just leave the towel on the floor with your shoes. Oh, but Mr. Josh, I need to talk to you first. Uh, let's go to your room. Sure. I'll keep your bear company. 
All right. I'll end the part here, everyone, so I'll see you around. <laughs>